main challenge with lipid digestion is that lipids are not water-soluble, while the environment in our stomach and our intestine is watery. By themselves, lipid would float on top and not be accessible to the digestive enzymes on the bottom. For this reason, before they can be efficiently broken down by our digestive enzymes, lipids have to be emulsified, that is, turned into tiny little droplets that are kept in suspension in the watery environment of the GI tract. This largely increases the surface areas of the interface between fats and aqueous environment where the digestive enzymes are. The digestive enzymes that accomplish lipid hydrolysis are called lipases. We have a lingual lipase in our mouth, a gastric lipase in our stomach, and the pancreatic and intestinal lipases in our intestine. Emulsification is accomplished by the bile, a watery solution which is made in our liver and stored in our gallbladder and contains bile salts, phospholipids, free cholesterol and other metabolites. Bile salts are biological detergents made from cholesterol that emulsify dietary lipids with the help of phospholipids. These emulsifying molecules are helped by the movements in our GI tract that shake the gastric content and intestinal content so that lipids and water can blend just like we do when we shake oil and vinegar. There are three main movements in our GI tract. Peristalsis by longitudinal muscle, which mostly help move stuff along. Segmentation by circular muscle, which do a sort of chop-chop push, very effective in lipid emulsification. And pendular motion, which is the movement of our villi, useful to mix enzymes and lipid droplets on the brush border. The goal of triglyceride and phospholipid dihydrolysis is detaching the fatty acids from the glycerol backbone. The goal of cholesterol digestion is removing the fatty acid that is usually attached to it, and so hydrolyzing the cholesterol ester into free cholesterol and free fatty acid. In our mouth, chewing and mixing with saliva starts the lipid emulsification process. Lingual lipase starts hydrolyzing short and medium chain triglycerides. Thanks to its activity, these triglycerides are hydrolyzed at rates five to eightfold higher than long chain triglycerides. However, lingual lipase is soon inactivated by the acidity in the stomach, and it appears to be more important in infants. In the stomach, gastric lipase starts working on long-chain triglycerides, usually by removing just one fatty acid from glycerol. About 30% of fat is digested here. It's a sort of pre-processing. The real deal happens in the intestine. Here, our gallbladder releases bile into the intestine. Bile contains bile salts and phospholipids that accomplish a very effective fat emulsification with the help of intestinal movements, creating small lipid droplets that greatly increase the surface area accessible to digestive enzymes, and in particular, pancreatic lipases released from the pancreas. After the work of the enzymes, bile salts and phospholipids are still necessary to keep the hydrolyzed lipids in micelles so that they can cross the water layer surrounding the brush border and reach the enterocytes membrane for absorption. After they have completed their task, bile salts are for the most part reabsorbed and enter the so-called enterohepatic circulation. They are sent back to the liver, which can recycle them to make new bile. The part that is not absorbed goes to the large intestine where it's further metabolized by gut bacteria and subsequently excreted. The enterohepatic circulation of bile salts is targeted by a class of cholesterol-lowering drugs called binders. By preventing their reabsorption so that they cannot be recycled, the liver will have to use new cholesterol to make new bile salts, thus lowering blood cholesterol levels. Soluble fiber in food and plant sterols have a very similar effect and are both able to lower blood cholesterol levels. Inhibition of gastrointestinal lipases, instead, is the most widely used pharmacological therapy for obesity and weight management, resulting in reduced dietary lipid absorption. Drugs like Orlistat inhibit gastric and pancreatic lipases, reducing fat absorption by around 30%. The major downside is GI discomfort, due to the presence of fats in the large intestine, but the inclusion of soluble fiber in the diet greatly reduces the side effect. Compounds such as saponins and polyphenols from seaweeds, green tea, and some berries 
have been found to inhibit pancreatic lipase and therefore have an oristat-like activity, reducing absorption of lipids.